Mount Basavi was once an active volcano. It stopped erupting 200,000 years ago, and rainforest took over. Since then, it's remained unchanged, untouched, and unexplored. Steve and the team are following a river to the heart of the crater. It's slow going, but it's the best way to cover ground in a dense jungle. Not no. bad spot. Good spot. We try and get a tarp up before this rain starts. Yeah, yeah. Shelter is essential. New Guinea is one of the wettest places on Earth. It can pour for days on end. The Kosowa tribe come from the outer slopes of the mountain. These old men remember a time before any contact with the outside world, when their clan were cannibals. They said their fathers were, were great warriors and used to battle with nearby clans quite often, but they also have, it seems, very vivid memories of them actually killing and eating their enemies. Um, the chief here was describing how he remembers them cutting the thighs into, into halves and putting them on stone fires to cook them. Um, and it seems that it was not so much a ceremonial thing, but actually just for the meat, for the protein, for the fact that, you know, meat was quite scarce around here and to have human meat was as good as anything. They no longer eat people, but they are still expert hunters totally at home in this jungle. Without the tribe, the expedition would be lost. Two hundred thousand years ago, Mount Basavi would have looked like this, hostile and desolate. But George knows better than anyone where to find signs of life. This is definitely where I'd expect to find something. Look at that baby. Look at that. A rhinoceros beetle larva. It's a whopper. Look at that. Heads up here, big jaws, and they, they just eat this decaying wood and fibre. I have to put him down somewhere. Put him on there while I attack the rest of this. Ah! <laughs> There's the adult. <laughs> so there is what this will become eventually. Rhinoceros beetle. Absolutely brilliant. Some creatures endure the volcano. Others actually seek it out. I can see two birds that look like sort of large hens. They're megapod birds, and bizarrely, they depend on this active volcano. In the Basavi crater, Steve and the trackers fan out to explore for the first time. Steve will climb, crawl and swim the rivers to find out what lives here. Chief Sigaro and the trackers search the high ground. In the valley, Steve stumbles across something remarkable. Absolutely out of this world. It's a rare kind of kangaroo that climbs trees, and it's probably never seen people before. The fact that this animal is totally unafraid of humans, just wandered straight past us, means the wildlife here, you know, has never been hunted before, it hasn't seen people before. I never expected to have a tree kangaroo on our first morning that we've been up and running. This, you know, is a phenomenal start. A phenomenal start. 
It's time to call in wildlife cameraman Gordon Buchanan. Gordon's mission is to film any animal the team finds. Many of the rainforests that I've been to before are quite, quite flat. This is a very, very difficult terrain. And without a doubt, there'll be species down there that are completely unknown to science. Finding and filming a large mammal that no one knew existed would be the greatest prize of all. But in this rugged terrain, it's a daunting prospect. Gordon has with him two scientists who will help to identify any mammals the team discovers. Muse Opiang and Chris Helgen set up their makeshift jungle lab. But Gordon has no time to unpack. One of the trackers has found another tree kangaroo. Uh, we just had a shout from one of the local guys shouting Tunape, which is the tree kangaroo, so I'm hoping to catch up before it goes as quick as we can. Oh. Ah. oh, yeah, he's here. Oh, goodness me. It's a Dorius tree kangaroo just literally six, seven metres in front of me. For me, these animals are the height of weird. They're one of the strangest animals that live in this forest. I think because they're recognisable. They're kangaroos, but these kangaroos live in the trees. It's like a cross between a koala bear and a kangaroo. Oh, he's very cute. <laughs> really short, stocky build. Um, huge claws. The nails must be about two to three inches long. Oh, yes, he's eating. Oh, lovely. Now, that's a really good sign because animals that feed are relaxed. One hundred percent, this animal will never have seen a human being before. So that's why we're able to stay as, sit as close as this as we are. Tree kangaroos are incredibly rare. Outside the crater, they're heavily hunted and afraid of people. Inside, they aren't bothered by humans. George's volcano could go off at any time, but he's too engrossed to care. He's hot on the trail of the peculiar megapode bird. One of them's just landed really clumsily on that branch and thrown up a whole shower of ash. It, it's very hard to get, get close to these birds. They're very skittish. I reckon if we inch forward to this ridge, They've landed, they're down. There's two, two just on the ground. 